So today's little job um, will be removing these heater knobs that are painted black but the paint's coming off them uh, and doing them in the same grey colour that I've done the wheels and such. Uh, so hopefully they'll come off easy if I can remember. Pretty sure they just pull off. Let's have a go. Oh, there's one. There's two. And there's three. Oh yeah, I had to tape that one up because it had broke. Uh, did I tape them all up just in case? Yep. So they're all taped up. So yeah, painting them grey. And I might do the outside of this as well. Because that's... In fact, no, I'll leave that because that's the same as that. Yeah, I'll see. Let's see what happens. give it a blaster with that um, rubber gunmetal paint and some clear lacquer to put over the top afterwards. So, let's have some blue roll. Again, this is, uh, I'm, not, I'm not a professional painty person. I just enjoy messing about with stuff, so don't take anything doing as being the necessarily the right way, it's just the just the way that I do it. Just give them a bit of a wipe over just to get rid of any sort of grease or, or contaminants on there that might stop the paint from, uh, from sticking. something to, to put them in while we spray them to stop spray going everywhere. See Jack up, at, up there at the bedroom window. Funny sausage. You can get uh, aluminium ones of these, but they're a bit uh, they're a bit expensive from from them. Right? So what I've done is I've found a box and then I've tried to make make a little stand um, just to stick these in. So they don't fall over, basically. Uh, it's not the best thing, is it? Not to put some masking tape around it. Um, but the the general idea is that they stand up. And you'd have to hold them in your hand and stuff. That might work. So, um, yeah, I'll reposition it a bit further outside, just so we're not going to be breathing in loads of fumes and stuff, and then I'll uh, start again. So, uh, first of all, a bit of primer.
and then uh, then we just leave that to dry for a bit. So I've um, relocated inside. It started raining a bit. Let's get some uh, let's get some gunmetal grey on here. So when you're spraying paint, um, it's always best to, to do a, a spray underneath where you want it to spray and then spray in. And don't press the button while you're pointing at the object, press it before. Otherwise you can you know, get splatters on there. So as you can see, if I move you over there, it started reacting on this side up here, on that one, and on that one, and a little bit on that one. So we could have probably done with uh, wiping that a bit better or uh, waiting for the, the primer to dry a bit more. But it's okay, we'll, we'll not see it. We're we'll not, we're not, we're not fussed. Could be better, but... The idea is to do some of fun. So uh, let's let's watch some paint dry. <laughs> speed so uh, what you just got was like a super fast version of me spraying lacquer on um, and what I was saying while I was doing that is I'm not doing it properly so I should really leave it to, to dry for 24 hours flatten the surface off again so the lacquer has something to key into um, and then build the lacquer up from there um, but it's, it's just the heat controls it's not it's not body panels so it doesn't have to look perfect and say there's that bit of reaction on there anyway um, so it'll be fine basically so this is a prime example of, of bodging it um, so yeah there we go I'll uh, come back to it when, uh, when we're going to put them in the car and see what they look like cleaning them up, rubbing them down and starting again with them. So uh, yeah, again, good example of what not to do. This, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, it looks a bit milky when it went on, but as long as it stops them fading going forward, it should be okay. Um, and then uh, I did the front one as well, but it's exactly the same, so I didn't, I didn't film that. Um, so there you go. So yeah, these rubbish that not bad so 
Uh, yeah, let's see if I can rescue these. So back to back to the start again. So we've managed to sand all the crap off them basically. Um, I think the lacquer because it had, it had basically softened all the paint that were already on, so it just more or less peeled off, and then I've flattened them down afterwards. So next, just give them a rub over um, with a degreaser, and then prime them up. that looks okay or would when I again when I put it on at first it was gonna gonna look a bit milky but kind of quite shiny on there so yeah happy with that so after making a complete R so it to start with um, I put another Another bit of primer on, uh, let that dry, um, and I've just put um, the other um, Rover Gunmetal Grey on there, so let's have a look. Well, it's just started to rain, so I better take him in, but it looks alright. Uh, so you can't really see, it's a bit, a bit rubbish this camera for focusing, uh, but yeah, so it looks, looks a lot better so far. Uh, so hopefully it'll, it'll dry like that. And then I can build lacquer up rather than just chucking loads on it and leaving it. Um, and then yeah, they should look, they should look all right when they're in. Let's see what uh, see what the next few hours or a couple of days later brings. the banding uh, this is the, the kind of finished um, product on there it's uh, it's it's not super dry yet so I'll leave it until tomorrow but uh, it's quite dry but it's not dulled it's still still quite shiny on there um, and this is the stuff that I used 
So it must be uh, that other that other can were normal Halford stuff. So yeah, maybe it does. Maybe it does pay to to pay a bit more. Um, what is this? I'm sure it mentioned being one one k. Oh, there we go. Proclear Pro is a high is performance one k lacquer, giving crystal clear UV and petrol resistant finish, ultra glossy finish. Drying time thirty to sixty minutes. It might actually be drying a bit, actually. Maybe. Maybe. Have a look. So here they are all, all painted up and uh, lacquered and they look, I don't know, they don't look too bad then, quite shiny, uh, again not perfect in there but that's fine. So let's, uh, let's fit them in and see what they look like inside. There we go, I don't think they look too bad those, fit quite in, quite in, uh, quite in. Fitting quite nicely, um, shiny enough. Yeah, don't look too bad. Quite happy with that. And uh, I left that bit silver, because it kind of matches this bit anyway. Um, so if I were doing that, then that'd stand out. And then if I did that, then this bit looks weird. So I don't know, maybe one day. But yeah, I'm quite happy with those. They'll they'll do. Kind of think. <laughs> about doing other bits like that now but no that's enough so there we go that's them done um it's a bit dark in here, but, uh, so there you go that's them done um so yeah that's uh our it started off the idea was to to show you how to do something quickly and not necessarily um professionally uh but it ended up being how to do something completely wrong and then strip it down and then do it right um I think to be honest, the first time it probably would have gone better if I'd have used the other pri uh, the other clear coat rather than the that old Halford's tin. Uh, not that Halford's clear coat is bad, but I don't think it's as good as that two uh, that one K one. Um, so I'll definitely be using that one K one in future for other bits and pieces, uh, especially bodywork and stuff. Because I think it, when I did the bodywork last time, the reason why it looks so well, the reason why it looks a bit patchy is because the, the clear coat didn't dry before I started flattening it off and I left it for a couple of weeks but it were it weren't it weren't warm weather. So uh, yeah, there many, many mistakes. So yeah, not necessarily how to do things properly but just having a go at stuff and you get some alright results. Cool, right. I hope that's been fun to watch. Um ta see you soon. Mm -hmm.